Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about five home decor and furniture pieces that I regret buying and that I will never buy again. Trust me, you're gonna to wanna to take notes on this one. Now my list contains some items that I have in my own house and then some that I had at my parents' house. And that's because I was kind of involved in the decision-making behind those. I went along with them for furniture shopping and then we picked up pieces together. It was a lot of fun, but there were some mistakes that we made. I actually learned from those mistakes and did not then make those mistakes in my own house. Anyways, let's get into the list. The first item on my list are mirrored nightstands. This is something that I have in my own house and I'm wanting to get rid of it. Currently, mine have two cracks that are thankfully not very visible. As soon as I say mirrored, nightstands I think people think of like fingerprints and they think it's very hard to clean um, I know that because I get that question on Instagram a lot I don't know they're in the master bedroom they're you know in kind of a corner of, of the house that we don't go to too often like yeah we're there at nighttime we're there in the morning but we're not around those nightstands enough to cause like crazy fingerprints and plus the fingerprints are very easy to erase like it's just a quick wipe really so that is not my issue with mirrored nightstands my issue is just the fact that they are so so easily breakable. Let me tell you a little story of when they actually came in for delivery. So the first time around, one of the nightstands was broken. Just there was this big crack on the mirror itself. So, you know, I had to coordinate with the company, get them to take it back. The next delivery, thankfully, was fine. But I got the idea that, okay, these are easily breakable. I mean, it seems kind of obvious, but I thought maybe the way they would pack it, it wouldn't break. But apparently it's a very common thing because once I had a professional cleaner come to my house who saw my nightstands and she said that she actually has six of them in her walk-in closet and I was like what like why do you have so many of them and she said that when she ordered them online they just kept coming in with cracks and so she would call the company back they would send her another pair and they would just tell her to keep the pair like so she actually has like a huge dresser almost you know made up of like six of these nightstands I mean I'm surprised she kept ordering them like I would just stop at that point my son when he was crawling he like went and hit one of the nightstands straight at the bottom and it just caused this big crack across the drawer. I mean, thankfully he didn't get hurt and you know, I was always kind of like careful around him in that area, but a kid is a kid and they're gonna end up there. So I don't like that they can be unsafe. And now with my little one, she loves to jump on the bed, which is fine, but then I'm always so like scared that she's gonna fall off on the side of the nightstand. And I think the injury can be a lot worse than, you know, obviously if she were to just fall on a regular wood nightstand. I do love how they look. They kind of are bright, you know, they reflect light because they're mirror obviously. And especially in my bedroom, like the way my bed is, it's got these like little studs in this classic shape. They do pair with it really, really well. They're just not very practical. And they were expensive too, so. You know that doesn't feel good because now they have these cracks and it's kind of like i can't even really resell them because who's gonna buy like nightstands with cracks like they work fine and everything maybe i should think about putting them in my walk-in closet i didn't think about that so yeah please just try to go for like regular wood nightstands the next item on my list are these curved back and arm dining chairs i had these in my house for about three years and i'm glad i no longer have them okay so these chairs are everywhere they look beautiful they come in like different fabrics they come in just wood like they're popular okay but let me tell you the problem with them when you have a dining chair that is kind of like hugging you around it's not good like i know it sounds like it should be good because someone's hugging you but it's it's not okay in a dining chair setting because think about it every time you have to sit on that chair you kind of have to pull it all the way back and go around you can't just slip in from the side of it because there's that blockage from the arm or that curve, right? I found this a lot, especially as a host, when I would be sitting with my guests and chatting and then I have to go grab something, I can't just like slip right out. I would have to push the chair all the way back, get up, then make enough space for me to go around it and then go, like, I just didn't like that. Also, it's not the greatest thing for anyone that might have a bigger body because they're not gonna easily fit into that and they're probably gonna get uncomfortable seeing it it's, it's kind of like a narrow opening and you gotta fit into it you know so it's not ideal i mean of course if we start thinking about all kinds of body types and stuff like that then we would just um, think about a lot of different accommodations but I'm just trying to bring up some situations that you might encounter also it was very hard to like pick up my child and put my child in my in my lap if they wanted so if I was eating at the dining table and my toddler came around and wanted me to pick them up like I couldn't just pick them up from the side because like the, the arm was right here my last little issue with these dining chairs is that they take up a little bit more space than they should it's not common to find these kind of curved chairs that tuck all the way in and if you have a smaller dining space then you know they're gonna take 
take up some precious real estate and just make the space feel crowded. Whereas if you have regular chairs, you can just tuck them in and make for a neater look, you know. If you're considering these chairs, I would say think about going for something a little bit more classic instead. The next item on my list is a glass coffee table and we're at my parents' house with this one. So I remember buying this rectangular glass coffee table. It honestly looked great. The space at the time was also not that big, so it kind of did what glass tables do which is that they let you see through them so that the space looks a little bit bigger there's no blockage to your like line of sight but it is very easy to hurt yourself if you have a rectangular wooden table it's almost like you're a little bit more mindful of its edges whereas the glass one i guess subconsciously you can be a little bit more neglectant neglectant is that a word but you know, you can kind of ignore the edges of it. We bought this back when there were no grandkids or anything like that at my parents' house. So it was safe from that perspective. But yeah, I remember getting a little bit hurt around the edges. And yeah, it's just something that you have to constantly be mindful of. So when I had my own house, I did still go ahead and get a glass coffee table. But I got one that was very, very different. It was the one that you must have seen. It was like very much in maybe five, six years ago with a curved shape all around. No kid has ever gotten hurt at my house. It's also just thicker than like the skinnier glass tables. The other kind of a glass table that one could have is like a fully rounded one. That one I think is not that bad. Just considering the fingerprints that you can have on a coffee table, right? Because it gets a lot of use and the smudges and everything, it's probably just not worth it. Just go for something a little bit more substantial like wood or marble. So after seeing and having experience with a couple of different kinds, I'm just not sure I would ever go for them again. The next item on my list is a shag rug. So this was another item that we got at my parents' house. It honestly used to look really, really good. It was so plush. It was so cozy under your feet. But like, it's a magnet for crumbs. Your socks can get lost in there. I'm kidding. But you know what I mean? Like the fibers of it, like they just trap everything. And of course, you have that constant fear that if you spill something, it's going to be really hard to get it out. Stains are hard to get out as compared to other like regular kind of rugs. Now that I'm thinking about it, even the long fibers that these rugs have are a little bit harder to vacuum. Like maybe you need like a pet vacuum with this, you know? Anyways, not for me anymore. Okay, the last item on my list is a cheap leather couch. Once upon a time, we did have a leather couch which was not genuine leather it's faux leather basically it looked great i would say for about a year or two but after that is when it started deteriorating really badly and the way they deteriorate is interesting they still work like they're not horrible but they're starting to look very ugly <laughs> So it's, it's, it puts you in a bit of a limbo. Like it looks so bad, but it's still nice and comfy or whatever. So what should I do? Like it puts you in this state where for a year or two, you might just be stuck with this like really bad looking couch. Anytime you see a leather couch in the same price range as fabric couches, just know that it's not real leather, obviously. What happens with these kind of couches is that they're prone to cracking and peeling. They're also less resilient to tears and punctures. So they're just gonna get damaged more easily with your everyday lifestyle the other thing i don't like about them is that they are not comfortable to sit on especially when it's hot a lot of them are made with pvc which can trap heat and just feel very sticky on your legs arms and that's just not a good feeling faux leather is also less breathable so like when you're sitting on it that's also part of why it heats up because it's just no air is is being allowed through it this couch behind me is a genuine leather couch and it's great it's gonna patina over time very nicely i have another one in my basement playroom which is a white leather couch from ikea that one was not cheap either and it's genuine leather it's no longer as white as it used to be but it's still like there's literally no rips on it now they are definitely cost effective right that's why we buy them they do their job i guess for a little bit but if you really think about the longer term impact and sustainability they are not great and that kind of pvc is also like very hard to recycle it's just literal garbage it's almost better to just go with the fabric couch there's so many out there nowadays that um, have removable covers so you can wash them you have the little bissel and stuff like that that you can use to to clean fabric couches if you can go for a genuine leather that's great there's there's you know there's a mid-range genuine leather ones and then there's a very high-end ones so obviously you pick what your range is but of course they're better than faux leather couches 100 so there you have it these are five items that i regret buying and that i will never be bringing home again i hope you can learn from my mistakes and invest in items that are actually gonna enhance your space and your lifestyle and not have you worried about doing something wrong or you know having to make decisions on whether you need to chuck them out and buy something new or stick with them for a few more years if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button and make sure you are subscribed to my channel because i have lots more fun content coming up i'll see you in my next video